Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, we're gonna try out one of the new released beasts in 320 Forbidden Sanctum League, and this is the Vivid uh, Vulture Beast. And if you don't know what this thing is doing, don't worry, I'm gonna explain it to you. It's long as I'm actually wait aware. So um, this is one of the new beasts and uh, what these things are doing is basically re-rolling the synthesized implicit of a synthesized item. Kinda, okay? Um, and we do have a couple of bows here that do have a simplicit as an simplicit dude a synthesized implicit I need to stop combining words in my brain all the time dude. It's getting out of hand. Anyways, so they reroll a synthesized implicit. We do have a couple of bows here with a very, very low dex requirement because what we try to hit here is the exploding mod or any other good mods. So the problem with a majority of synthesized bows, um, because they are like, I would say best in slot for a majority of caster builds, doesn't matter if it's EK Ignite, doesn't matter if it's like... Um, BV or something like that. The problem is all of these caster builds do lack um, dexterity and it's very hard to get the dexterity going, but um, if you get like a bow base that has a very low dex requirement, like here 65, 65, 6, uh, 53, and the crude bow doesn't even have a dex requirement, um, these bows should go for a lot more because the high, like, um, I don't know, like the usual high end bow types do have like tw a 212 dexterity requirement. Like my bow has, I think, like 150, so this is like right on the edge that I don't have to invest more. And we're gonna try to re-roll this implicit. As far as I know, the Gilded modifier is not a synthesized implicit, so this will not get overrolled. But there is another thing that you could technically do. Let's let's just theory craft, you know, what could be potentially or what could happen. As far as I know, you could like take one of these like three modded implicit items, like this one over here with three uh, implicits, re-roll all the time, until you hit one good mod. Let's let's assume you get exploded, for example, right? Um, and then you could make a magic item out of it, beast imprint, and then keep on rerolling the implicit as long as your exploded, for example, stays on. And then you can go for like, I don't know, like any other spell, double damage, increased fire damage, whatever your build needs. And then you keep on imprinting and then try to hit like the perfect dream triple implicit. But this is like very, very expensive. So we keep it simple. We're just going to try to hit one of a very cool um, simple, um, synthesized implicit and hope to make some bank. Let's take a look at the write down. Today we're going to do 100 vivid vultures, which are these uh, weird synthesized beasts by Atomics. And he spent round about, he did bulk buy it. Um, so he was like 90 chaos. Um, per red beast and obviously every recipe needs uh, three yellow beasts on top So um, he bought like a uh, hundred red beasts um, 300 yellow beasts and the total amount of uh, currency spent is around about 42.5 divine orbs with today's uh, divine exchange ratio of 1 to 240 This is actually weird because the divines are going up and down like every day Like yesterday they were like 300 chaos per divine now It's like 240 or it dropped even down to 220 now. It's going up again kind of weird but I think we're just gonna keep on re-rolling the implicit until we hit one of the good mods. I'm not really entirely sure what the good things go for because you have to keep in mind um, an explodey bow with a very high dex requirement, in my opinion, is worth less than an explodey bow on a very low dex requirement. And this bow, the crude bow, doesn't even have any dex requirement because it's like... I don't know, this is your starter bow basically, right? You get this from level 1, so if you hit explode on this one, I think the thing could be worth uh, quite a lot. And since we're using this as a spellcaster, we don't care about attack speed, crit strike chance, uh, physical damage, all of these things um, do not really matter. So I would say we're going to pick up the first four, we're just going to try it out. Um, the bases here are not um, calculated in this because honestly... If you buy a base for a divine and you don't get anything good, you just sell it for a divine again, right? So that's why there is like no point of listing those because we're not going to destroy them, right? Hopefully at least. So I would say let's take a row here uh, and let's get on going. And the good thing is I can even farm challenges now because there is a call of the wild where you have to use complete beast craft at the blood alt uh, altar. So we're going to get this one uh, going as well. I just hope that I'm not going to die randomly when I try to do one of that. It just like um, reroll a synthesis implicit modifier. This is the vivid vulture. So we're gonna pop this one in. Uh, we do have currently damage with poisons, and we're just gonna go with the flow, you know. And we try to hit explodey because explodey is going for a mirror, 200 divines, something like that. 
and we get increased fire damage. This is actually not even bad. Like, honestly, fire damage implicit, especially for, like, something like EK, is pretty nice. But the problem, in my opinion, is um, some people are listing those kind of bows for, like, 30, 40 divines. And honestly, I don't see a realistic world uh, where somebody is willing to spend... 100 divines for an increased fire damage implicit. It's only an increased damage. So something like a socketed support gems, one additional arrow, for example, where this is like a bad base for it, but maybe toxic rain or something, I don't know. Um, or uh, spell double damage or something like that would be a lot worth more. The question is, I'm just gonna um, take the next base because I need atomics to confirm if I should overroll this or not because a 40% I think is actually the highest roll that you can get. But I'm not sure about it. Um, I personally would overall it because who cares about increased fire damage as long as there is no explody or socket support gems or something like that. So, Sin, we're just gonna pop in uh, the next beast and see what we get. Uh, we're gonna get minion increased damage. Bruh. Actually, almost killed me there. Uh, Chaos explosions are naughty. So, then we have nearby allies have increased damage. Garbo. Next. So where is Atomics? Atomics, Atomics, Atomics. Uh, it's up to you, sir. I don't mind overrolling. Yeah, then we overall because I just think like... Um, global physical damage. I just think like if we get the exploding mod on the crude bow with no dex requirement, I think that might actually be quite fun. Um, but overall, as I said, you need to hit the, uh, the right bow with the right implicit. And that would be explody. Increased fire damage. This is a local mod. This is for on-hit builds. We don't care about that. And we just keep on blasting. Stun duration on enemies. Wow. Actually insane. But on the other hand, you know, if you don't hit one of the good implicits, very easy to uh, lose some currency, right? Uh, increased attack speed. Not gonna do it for us. Is not gonna do it. This is like the risky thing. Because if you, you know, when you do like uh, things like that, um, you always have like, there is good on hit things and there is good caster things, you know, since it is a bow in the end. And there is like on the tornado shot or, or other bow builds that actually want to have a high base because this bow only has like 6 to 16 damage. So we are um, initially re-rolling that bow just because we want to have a, a caster bow made out of it, right? For example, EK for BV and those kind of things. And since these builds are meta, they do make sense, but overall, it's still a gamble, you know? The, the more specific your item is, um, the harder it is, right, to, to get something good. So that is a bleed damage, doesn't do it either. But, you know, everybody is good at something, and my speciality is definitely losing currency, but... Hey, it, it, I didn't force Atomics to do that, okay? He said he wants to do that. But... I'm, I'm just a guy doing the, doing the job, right? I'm just a guy doing the job. And obviously, if he gets something good, you know, 30% cut is usual, and if not, then... Uh, it's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not my problem! I mean, honestly, the amount of currency that I wasted, this league alone, not only my currency and viewers' currency, we are probably up to, like, over a one and a half mirrors of loss. Crit multiplier would be nice, but it's considered more of an additional modifier. Let's say, is multiplier alone good? Not really. Is Explody with multiplier good? Hell fucking yes, you know? Flammability curse effect. Let me re uh, check this one real quick because I'm not sure. Flammability curse effect. Implicit bow. Non unique. Let's see where we are at here. So it's a 28 with a very. See, that's what I mean. 212 dex requirement. Like if I would, if I would like to use this bow. I need to get another, like, 50 dexterity from somewhere, you know? And I don't really want to spend skill points to actually get those dex um, nodes. That would be the easiest way, but the better your character gets, um, you want to have, like, large clusters, medium clusters, and so on. So you don't really want to spend additional points just for the sake of dexterity. But it seems like uh, this going for, like, 
Yeah, this is like fire damage and flammability curse effect, which I think is a pretty nice combination going for two divines. So there is no way we're going to sell this one as a pure uh, flammability. It's maybe a divine, right? But we are looking for the big dick stuff because we Atomics invested like 40 divines to actually get this bow going, right? Or just gamble. We're not going to settle down on a freaking, uh, what is it? Two divine sale, if even. But the other one had fire damage, as I said, so... Here we have increased fist damage, doesn't do anything either. Six intelligence. So, uh, let me quickly um, catch up in chat. Uh, I want the low dex requirement on bow, but your gems are like 155 dex. Better go with 150-ish dex bows. Yeah, you could do that, but not everybody is using uh, grace. I mean, hatred only has 98, right? The problem is grace. Grace has a lot of requirement, and not everybody is running grace. And there is other builds that don't use Grace or Haste, for example, right? They don't. They need a lot less um, requirement. But you know, if you want to play like a very high-end build, there is. I think there is a lot of like high deck spaces out there. But I think with the current meta of uh, Explodey bows um, for casters, because I mean, let, let's say it like this way: Why does every caster in the end game actually wants to have a bow? Because simply, um, you can essence craft that multi mod, and you have a very sick endgame item. You get an additional six link, and on top of that, you get a quiver as a stat stick. This is something a staff cannot do. This is something a wand cannot do. Wand would have the option to a shield, but you have an additional six link for an aura setup, and that's why why a bow is actually that strong for casters. I mean, they nerfed this at one point because remember back in the days. Um, you know, Quivers now have like crit multiplier with bows, dot multi with bows, because a lot of casters were abusing these dot multi Quivers. So they changed that, but we're here for Explodey for plus one um, socketed support gems for our aura setup. I mean, I have a bow like that, right? And my uh, Enlighten is level, level eight. So if I have an Awakened Enlighten, it's level nine. It's like ridiculously strong when it comes to like an aura setup. Cold rest. I mean, there is so many modifiers, and obviously it's weighted, right? So hitting, uh, hitting, exploding on a ball like this is like trying to find the needle. You know, it's like most likely not gonna happen, especially when I'm doing this, right? But hey, may maybe lucky, maybe streamer client activated, maybe exploding bow. And if not, which would not be surprising at all, we're just gonna lose 40 divines. She's damaged, it's terrible. Increased spell damage. Okay, let's pick up the next. Let's do two rows even. But Atomics is a rich fuck anyway, so he it he, he does fucking hell, dude. He probably doesn't even care about uh, losing a, a 40 divines, because he said he's rich, so or at least he didn't say it, but I know it. And even if he would say he's not, you know, hey, if I if I see a good item and I'm short on currency, I'm like, yo, Atomics, do we have 20 divines? He's like, sure, guild stash. All right, so. You know? You always have a couple divines on stash. Because hey, sometimes you just don't have the currency and you see a good item snipe and you're like, bro, I need to get this. It happens. It happens. Alley damage. We could spend a couple on like this three implicit bow. Just to give it a go, you know? All damage to spells. Crit multi. Because obviously, if, if we're gonna get like crit multi on the bow and then reroll and it keeps a crit multi and we get explodion on top, it's big money. 
Let me let me throw a few on this like triple implicit actually. It has the highest dex requirement, but fine I guess. We can we can, we can go for a for a few. Dude, I haven't even checked what was on the boat before. Uh, I, I instantly thought that we hit Expo because it's like a long mod, right? But nope, it's increased damage with hits and ailments against abyssal monsters. Hmm. Close one. The fire damage to spells, stun duration, and now this like weird thing. But I, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a visual person, you know? If I see a mod, I don't need to read it, and then I actually assume that is the mod. Because long text, you know, is explody. So now we got fire res. And there is not a lot of mods that have like a very long name, so... But apparently... Now we got minion damage... Yo, Einhar MVP, he, he lets me finish the crafting recipe without killing all the beasts. He's the man. Now we got increased cold damage... Actually, I wanna see... I wanna actually test this. Do I have an, imp uh, an imprint beast? No, we don't, sadly. Because I would like to, to test this. Chaos res. Oh well. Couple more in this one. So since I got this question now, isn't the triple implicit better? Just triple the chance of something worth? No. Um, it only takes one of these modifiers and replace it. It doesn't change all three modifiers. So now we have uh, cold damage, fire damage, spells, and chaos, right? The first ones are watching so if you go again, we now have chaos res, fire damage, and now it's lightning damage instead of whatever was there before. It only takes one mod each time. But in order to make like the best possible bow, you know, explodey plus one arrow and uh, I don't know, like crit multi or something like that. Um, you would need to have like a triple implicit bow and then I think you, the right way would be imprint. You get one good modifier and then you keep on imprinting and try to get three good modifiers. Hey, I got my challenge. Penetration. And not only are there like a fuck ton of uh, synthesized implicits, there is also different tiers of the implicits. So as I said, we were talking about probably, I don't know, like a fucking 1000 modifiers with all the resistance and, and whatnot. Now it's probably not that many, but you know, if multiplier has like three tiers and other stats have like 10 tiers, then uh, obviously it's gonna be hard. Attack damage. I mean, we're almost halfway through, and so far, we didn't got anything good. I'm just like, honestly, I'm not even sure if the item level does matter. Even maximum energy shield on the implicit. So not only do you have like attack mods, it's also like all defensive mods, resistance, and so on. So our bow is level 85, and the other ones is like, this one is 87. Um, I don't know if simplest, uh, implicit... I think it is, but there is no, no real list, I think. So if I go Craft of Exile and I would go for any, like, let's say a bow, um, for valing things, there is actually an implicit as well, right? So, for example, the most is, like, I don't know the one, but if you want to have, like, increased physical damage as a val implicit on a bow, you need, actually, item level 85 to hit the max roll, right? So even Val Orbs do have an implicit uh, or a, an item level requirement to hit certain mods. I think, like... Wasn't like quantity on belts was like item level 85 or 86. So if people um, had like there were some headhunters that actually had quantity on them, but they are like so freaking rare because obviously all these like uh, modifiers are uh, weighted as well. The cold damage implicit doesn't work on with EK. Uh, it does work, it does work, but there is there is one major issue with that. Why is increased fire damage better than increased cold damage, even though we are scaling a lot more cold damage on this build? 
And the reason is that cold damage will increase our EK damage, will increase our on-hit damage, for example, right? But cold damage doesn't necessarily increase our ignite damage. Yes, we're elementalist. Yes, all of our damage can ignite, but only fire damage is actually scaling our actual ignite damage, you know? Like, increased cold damage will not hire my ignite damage. It will hire the EK damage that will inflict a higher ignite. But if I say I have, like, a 100% increased fire damage, it will also um, increase the um, the damage of my EK thanks to the conversion. But it will uh, the 100% increased fire damage will also scale my flat ignite damage. Increased uh, against abyssal monsters again. Yikes, where is the explodey? Uh, each beast is about like a solo buyout, I think like 70 chaos or something. And if you bulk buy them, you're looking more towards like 100 chaos though. But you know what I think is the problem with those beasts? I think getting the beasts is not that hard, but they are, how would you say, base? These beasts are base of creating mirror tier bases. Like, not every um, explodey, double damage bow that is on the market is actually found this way. I think a lot of these bows had, like, the explodey, and then it was, like, imprint change implicit. Imprint change implicit, until you hit something good, you know? So, when it comes to mirror tier crafting, um, there is people that probably have, like, you know... Two, three thousand divines on their stash, and all they want to do is hit like the perfect bow, craft a mirror tier bow, and then um, like get rich from the copies, you know. So if you do this as a solo person, like Atomics does right now, it is quite unrealistic to hit something because we're spending here a hundred beasts as a forty divines. It is for a normal player like us a lot of currency, you know. But if you're like a mirror tier crafter and you have like a couple thousand. Um, Divines on your stash, it's just basically a matter of time until you hit it, right? That's why this is more like a gamble. Because if we hit something good, we have like hundreds of Divines profit. And if we don't, then uh, yeah, uh, it was nice, worth trying, I guess. The is complete. Quality of bow gem, but there is so many implicits, man. It's crazy. The more I think about it, the more unrealistic it is to hit. But on top of that... There is a reason why an explodey bow goes for like 150 or 200 divines. Because they are dead rare. This is this is always like the thing. The same is like um, when people complain about mage blood cards, the price of mage blood and so on. If the card wouldn't be that rare, mage blood wouldn't be that expensive. So if we talk about a mage blood, like I don't know what they are currently are, I would assume like 220, 240 divines. Intimidate for 4 seconds on hit. That's actually not even bad. But this is like an on-hit thingy, so I don't think that's actually good. So yeah, then, then people complain, Yo, I ran a thousand maps and I haven't gotten a single Apothecary card. Yeah, obviously, because if, if if you're supposed to find an Apothecary card every 100 maps, then the Mage Pot Belt wouldn't go for 250 Divines. It would more like be like 60, 70 Divines, you know? Because there is like a lot of people actually farming... Uh, Crimson Temples and Defiled Cathedrals, or town uh, Tower Ship, right? There's always a thing. If things wouldn't be that freaking rare, the items wouldn't be that expensive. On a regenerate? I watched the 3600 Ancient Orbs video, I will never use them again. I wonder who that guy was that spent 3,600 ancient orbs. 3% of quality is soccer. Um, dude, we're almost done with all the, the beasts. And we got nothing. I get a flashback. Chaos damage. I mean, you know how, how terrible that would be if there is like some super 5 hat crazy dude in the YouTube comments that said like, Oh, MBX, by the way, you need an item level 86 to roll that bow, and this doesn't work on a crude bow, and it needs to have 30% uh, quality in order to roll it, you know? Imagine. And I'm sitting here burning Atomic's currency just like there is... just like candy. And all of a sudden, it's not even possible. 
And I'm still waiting for the hotfix from GDG, where they explain and, and be sorry for Ancient Orbs not being able to roll Mage Bloods or Headhunters, man. I swear, this is like impossible, man. I was like, what? Why did the item sells much more to vendors swap plays? I was like, what is this? I swear, item sells much more to vendors was on the bottom before. See, now it's in the bottom again. That's interesting. Okay, here's my theory. The undisputed reason, which, by the way, doesn't really make sense at all, but I think that's the way it is. The more money you spend on PUE, the worse your RNG is. And you might wonder now, wait a second, that's, that's, uh... This is, why should this be a thing, right? But honestly, I did spend quite a lot of money on my account, right? I, I'm literally over $50 into my account, right? So, because usually, who are the guys that finding a mirror? Who are the guys that getting super, un, uh, like, lucky, opening three stack decks and get two apothecary cards? Who are these guys? It's usually not the guys that are actually grinding a fuck ton in PUE. It's usually, oh, this is my first leak. So I assume new accounts have a lot higher RNG because they need to keep the player in the game. You know, they are like, oh shit, I got an apothecary card. I'm rich now. I don't know why so many people complain and don't know how to make currency. I'm filthy rich now and it's my first league. It's insane. So I think there is like a, a system in there where the, um, the less money you have spent on your account, because for me, I spend already over $50 on my account or $60 or a bit more maybe, you know. There is no way I'm gonna stop the game, because I already spent so much money, you know? But if you're a new player, and you haven't spent anything, I think you're... They, they need to catch you, you know? They need to get you into the game. I think this is a good theory for me that explains why my account is so fucking rigged and I never get anything good. It has to be. There is no other way. There is no other explanation. Like, fuck these, like, loot gods and, and stuff like that. This doesn't... This is not a thing, dude. I swear. Critical strikes, chance for spells. Yep. We got spells. So we have like um, 11 more beasts. And then tomorrow morning is the funeral of uh, Atomics 42 Divines. And I hope uh, everybody is gonna join. I mean, remember when I got a, a headhunter out of uh, Bestiary? That was like my third league that I that I was playing, like very early in the beginning. I got a headhunter from, you know, get a random or or um, I think reroll a unique item or or create a unique belt. I actually got a headhunter from Einhard. And I was like, oh, that's an amazing game, dude. We need to spend some money for MTX, you know. And since then, never ever happened again. That actually proves my theory, right? It actually proves my theory. Then we got Chaos Res. It fucking proves my, my, my theory. Increase, okay, the last five. And we didn't hit any of the good mods. No plus one support gems, no explodey, no spell double damage, no, uh, what else was there? Explode spell double damage plus one and additional arrow, something like that. Seven dexterity, last three. We surely have more beasts. I, I didn't rent just a hundred beasts for that, right? Ouch. Yeah, right, we, we need more. I'm surely gonna hit something in, in, in the next three. But sadly, we only have two beasts left. I need to make a soundboard emote or a sound for flushing the toilet. So every time we lose currency, we can get like, and we get mana regeneration rate. And I think that was uh, 100 beasts. And uh, yeah, um, we still got the bases. Uh, we were very like, uh, what do you say? 
we thought we we're gonna hit big on this one. So we're gonna get an explodey, an additional arrow, another additional arrow, plus one socket of gems, and one that we're still rolling, and sadly this one didn't roll anything, but... I mean, how much was that? 42 divines down the toilet. So we don't even need to, um... Make some further calculations to tell you guys how much currency was gone, because honestly, everything was gone. Unfortunate. I lost a gamble. How come? How come, dude? This is actually so rigged. And yo, GGG, if you're watching this, fix my account. Thanks. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.